This is Spoken Gospel. We are dedicated to seeing Jesus in all of Scripture. In each episode, we see what's happening in a biblical text and how it sheds light on Jesus and His Gospel. Let's jump in. Proverbs 30 and 31 are the only chapters of Proverbs written by non-Jews. They're evidence that God's wisdom is not confined to a particular people. God's wisdom belongs to anyone who fears the Lord. Agur, our first Gentile philosopher, wants you to walk away from his chapter understanding the inevitable consequences of misplaced pride and the ironic success of the truly humble. Agur begins by humbly listing what he doesn't know in a series of rhetorical questions before admitting that God's words are the only words that will prove true. Any prideful attempt to add to God's wisdom will be shown for foolishness. So Agur, in the only prayer in Proverbs, asks God to make him content with a humble life, a life of neither poverty nor riches. Agur knows that either too much or too little will bend his heart away from God, so he asks God to spare him from either temptation. The rest of the chapter lays out for the reader the consequences of pride and the ironic rewards of humility. Pride leaves people to slander waitstaff, curse fathers, and take advantage of the poor. Pride blinds people to their own faults. Pride also enables people to justify cheating on their spouse. Like a desert or a barren womb, pride is never satisfied and always wants more of what it doesn't have. And as expected as a nosebleed is for a boxer, the proud get what's coming to them. Humility, on the other hand, is mysterious, like an eagle that soars even though he doesn't have to move his wings. Nature is full of similar surprises. The tiny ant in his vast network of underground storehouses. The leaderless locust who marches in formation. The unimpressive lizard who eavesdrops in the king's palace. Ager's wisdom is that while pride inevitably leads to a fall, humility is mysteriously and ironically rewarded. Agur agrees with the Apostle Paul who said that God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Our world does not believe this. Our world values strength, power, and competence, or at the very least, the appearance of those things. But God has determined to destroy the wisdom of the world. He chooses to use things like badgers and ants and crucified men to nullify the things that are so that no man may boast before him. Agur's wisdom is that, as ironic as it seems, there are rewards waiting for those who humble themselves. In Jesus and his cross, we see God himself completely humiliated. The world will look at that and say it's foolishness. But while the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. For anyone willing to accept Jesus' foolishness and abandon their pride, the mysteries and powers of humility will become theirs. While an ant's storehouse, a locust organization, and a lizard's stealth are impressive, they are nothing when compared to the resurrection power of Jesus in the life of those who are humble. While we might feel unimpressive, the gospel of Jesus' humble death makes us into a mystery that angels stand on tiptoe to see. May the Holy Spirit open your eyes to see the God who has hidden in his world the wisdom of humility. And may you see Jesus Christ as proof of its ironic power.